part two of the retail pharmacy workflow. We have on here the familiar graphic that we're already probably tired of seeing, nonetheless kind of burn it into your brain. We've got the prescription drop off, data entry, and now we're going to move on to product dispensing. The counting, the pouring, the labeling, uh, this is where the technician is picking the product that another technician just typed in. They're counting the product, you know, if, they, if the first technician calculated it to be 60 tablets or four ounces or whatever the case may be, they are then performing that task and putting it into a bottle, putting it into a bag. Uh, the system relies on you picking the correct product and if you pick in a different product obviously that is a pharmaceutical error and we'll hopefully have the pharmacist catch that at a later point in the workflow. So let's discuss partial fills. Partial fills are whenever you don't have enough product. Maybe whenever the prescription called for 60 tablets but you only have 40. What you should do at this point is give them enough, give the patient enough to get by until you can get more from your supplier. So maybe you'll give them only 10 tablets, but you'll owe them 50. Uh, you want to give them enough to be able to last until you can get more. This is fairly common. Most patients are fairly understanding about it. Unfortunately, at a pharmacy, you can't stock every drug there is, and occasionally you will have these partial fills. Uh, sometimes we'll just call them O's if you don't have any of the medication at all. So. Uh, we'll give them the remainder after it comes back. Now some laws are going to govern whether you can do this or not. Um, some uh, special controlled substances um, give a little more red tape as far as these partial fills are concerned, but we'll cover that later on in the course. So now we've moved on from prescription drop-off to data entry to counting the medication and prescription dispensing. Now we're going to move on to something that's kind of away from the technician into the pharmacist verification. This has everything to do with the technician, however, in that the pharmacist is checking your work. They're making sure everything you've done is correct. So I want to check that your directions were good, that the product you selected were good, that you remembered the refills, that the billing was correct. They're also going to check for important things like drug-drug interactions and drug-disease interactions. So this is important. Whenever the pharmacist finds something that you've done incorrectly, don't take it personally. Just know that they have the patient's best interest in mind and move on. It's nothing to be taken personal. Any incorrect work will be sent back. Sometimes the pharmacists will change it on their own. So now we're at the last section of the pharmacy workflow. We've covered prescription drop-off to data entry, counting it and dispensing. The pharmacist has verified it and moved it on. And now we are to patient pickup. This is where the patient picks up the medication. It probably doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. And this is wherever the patient should be offered counseling by the pharmacist. Never conduct counseling yourself. Patient asks how many times a day to take it. Should I take this with food? That sort of thing. Leave that to the pharmacist. You do not want the legal responsibilities of answering those questions. Uh, many patients will decline the counseling and that is fine, that is fine, that is their right to do so. Here at this point you will collect the copay and you'll take the money from them. Now let me remind you right now that you can get a job in a pharmacy currently as simply a pharmacy clerk, someone that just merely runs the cash register, maybe does some cleaning and some light, uh, some light duties around the pharmacy. What a great way to go ahead and get started right now. Maybe even parlay that into a technician job later. So I'll really advise you, if at all possible, while you're taking this course, start seeing if you can get involved with a, as a clerk in a pharmacy somewhere. Uh, put out a few resumes, see what you can do, tell them you're taking a video course right now um, to be able to get your certification and that you plan on becoming a, a certified pharmacy technician. One last portion about the copay I want to mention is deductibles. While in December a patient's copay may have been $20 and now all of a sudden it's $70, that's a problem usually dealing with deductibles. Many times their insurances will make the patients pay, say, $500 before they'll go into their regular copays. Every year this will come as a shock to the patient and they'll think that's never happened before, but it does happen every year to them. It's something that, uh, you know, the Insurances want to make sure the patients are paying a certain amount first. It's part of the plan. If you look into insurance plans, it's fairly common. Nonetheless, they may take their surprise out on you. Uh, you have to have kind of thick skin sometimes to work in a pharmacy to be able to uh, handle uh, giving bad news like that. One last section I want to cover in this course is return to stock medications. Many patients just won't pick up their medications. It happens occasionally, and yes, it is a little bit frustrating. You've done all that work and you kind of want to see them take their medication, take it home, and uh, you know get better. 
but many people will drop off the prescription, they feel they get better in a day and they never pick it up. That's whenever you do something called RTSing or just simply return to stock. The patients have about 14 days to pick up their prescription and after that you should really put the prescription back on the medication shelf. It's if it's ran through insurance you'll want to reverse it from the insurance, take it off of the patient's insurance and put it back. The pharmacy does not need to be getting paid for prescriptions that they have not given to the patient. So after 14 days, you put it back. Uh, not doing so is, you know, that's insurance fraud. You don't want to do that. So one last look at our pharmacy workflow graphic that you're probably sick and tired of seeing right now, but I really thought it was important. Uh, we've covered from prescription drop off all the way to uh, patient pickup. Whenever you see this, you'll kind of know, okay, this is where it is in the process and this is what still needs to be done before it can leave. To summarize, we've covered all of retail pharmacy workflow now. You know what's happened from prescription drop-off to patient pickup. Uh, not much of this will be seen on a pharmacy technician exam. However, it is seen every day in a retail pharmacy and I wanted you to be familiar with that before we moved on. So the nuts and bolts of being a pharmacy technician are in the sections to come. Be ready for it. It will start getting a little bit more difficult from here and take a little bit more study from here.